So I have a very important topic today. I mean, this is like probably something that everyone needs to know about as their foundational knowledge in nutrition, okay? And it relates to genetics. So many people think that, well, you know, I just have bad genes um, and there's nothing I can do about it. We just have to cope with it. But first of all, you can control your genes through what's called epigenetics. I have a lot of information on that. And that has to do with just lifestyle changes, right? Because the genes can turn on and off based on what happens in your environment. But what I want to talk about is the deeper cause of genetic malformations. Now, this talk is inspired by this amazing book that I got, which was actually very expensive, $250, Soil, Grass, and Cancer, okay? The link between human and animal health and the mineral balance in the soil. Fascinating. And I'm on chapter 16, and it's talking about the diet of the mother and malformation of the child. So I want to read a couple quotes right here. Almost all malformations observed in man have been reproduced in laboratory experiments with rats by altering the mother's diet during pregnancy. A diet deficient in folic acid produces virtually all known types of abnormalities in the hearts, arteries, and veins of baby rats. So a lot of these malformations can be reproduced if you create a deficiency in the diet. So I have a question. When do you think the most important time to eat healthy would be? If your answer was when you're pregnant, you are correct. Because the fetus, the growing baby that is developing, um, is completely dependent on the nutrients of the mother. And if there's just one thing missing, it can create a devastating chain reaction effect in their future existence. And I'm talking about behavior, talking about intelligence, I'm talking about structure, okay? Um, like if someone is born with flat feet, scoliosis, hunchback, whatever, or dental malformations, or some malformation in the shape of their face, it's all dependent on the nutrients. The nutrients, especially trace minerals, um, are essential for enzymes and proteins to work. And I'm not just talking about metabolism and building a body, but I'm also talking about the repair enzymes within your DNA. So your genes are basically blueprints, right? To allow certain cellular machinery to take that information and then build healthy tissue. You have actually two different sets of proofreading machines that actually go through the DNA at a very fast rate and they're scanning your DNA, which are the blueprints for errors, okay? And then there's at least five different repair proteins or enzymes that we know about, there could be more, that are in a constant repair action to repair any errors that occurred in this code. And all of these repair enzymes are dependent on micronutrients like folate, like zinc, cobalt that makes B12, copper, which is another trace mineral that makes vitamin C, iron. And if I didn't mention iodine, I'll mention it again, iodine. It's a huge connection between iodine and a child's intelligence. And then we have manganese. There's great information on the relationship between a manganese deficiency and a structural problem that could develop in a body. Then you also have calcium, calcium deficiency, which could come from a vitamin D deficiency. And then we have selenium, which helps make up vitamin E. And so all these nutrients are just so vital um, to be available when someone is pregnant, as well as when they're breastfeeding. And now, of course, if they're not breastfeeding, of course, they're probably put on formula, which I don't even want to get into that topic at this point. But unfortunately, the formulas are soy-based. And I mean, I actually talk about the worst ingredient to give a child, uh, especially when they're developing is uh, soy because of its estrogen effect. I mean, if you even think about another cause of um, genetic alteration, you have um, toxins, right? You have what's called endocrine disruptors, okay? Well, guess what is included in the definition of an endocrine disruptor? Any chemical or toxin that mimics estrogen, okay? And we know that certain 
things in our environment, like even soy, can increase estrogen. And you shouldn't be giving someone that early in life so much estrogen. But that's a whole different topic. Basically, in this video, I want to talk about just the uh, relationship between micronutrients and your genes and the importance of getting these micronutrients in your diet, especially at an early age. Now, there's some other additional information I want to share with you. In fact, I'm going to read it off right now um, in this study um, entitled Micronutrients and Genomic Stability. And basically, this is about stabilizing your genes with micronutrients, a new paradigm for recommending dietary allowances, the RDAs. Diet as a key factor in determining genomic stability is more important than previously imagined because we now know it impacts on all relevant pathways, namely exposure to dietary carcinogens, activation detoxification of carcinogens, DNA repair, DNA synthesis. So in other words, we have not given these micronutrients enough emphasis on their importance in making sure that our genes are stable. So you have certain genetic defects that you might be born with, right? Uh, but you also have genetic mutations and genetic mutations can occur this life. So a genetic mutation is a, is a change in your code that can occur from either being exposed to a toxin this life or having some micronutrient deficiency this life. In fact, there's data, which I'm going to put all this research down below, that demonstrates nutritional deficiencies can mimic radiation damage to your DNA. That's mind-blowing. So deficiencies in folate, B12, vitamin C, iron, especially zinc, okay, iodine, manganese, selenium, if you're deficient in those, that deficiency can mimic actual damage of your DNA. Now, you wouldn't actually think of a, a missing element causing damage because it's missing and you don't really look for things that are missing. You might uh, think more of like radiation, toxicity, things like that. But micronutrient deficiency is a very important thing. So getting back to this book for a second, um, he's going into deficiencies of copper in the soil can cause various problems in the animals that eat the grass. And they've actually taken like um, lambs and they move them into different pastures with certain nutrients present and these certain problems disappear. So this leads me to our actual food. You know, if your food is grown on soils that are missing certain nutrients, um, it could have devastating effects. The problem now is farmers use uh, three minerals, NPK, okay? N, nitrogen, P, phosphorus, and K, potassium. But what about all the other 90 plus minerals or trace minerals or elements that you need in the soil? That is an area that I'm very interested in. That's an area that I'm doing research now on a farm where I'm actually doing all sorts of experiments. In fact, recently I've just done an experiment spraying all of our grass um, with a very unique type of uh, ocean water without so much of the sodium chloride because that can be toxic to the grass. So we're doing experiments. I will be doing a video on this, but apparently it can really fortify the soil with all the micronutrients and limit the fungal infections to the plants. And it can actually greatly enhance uh, the health of an animal, which then enhances the health of humans that eat the animals. And I'm also doing experiments in my greenhouse, which I'll share with you as well, on using uh, hydroponic type solutions. Now, here's the problem that I have with hydroponic, and I'm doing this study right now, and I'll, I'll share the results um, when I'm done. Now, in one hydroponic unit, I'm using just the normal mineral solution that they give you, which is actually only like 15 minerals, okay? And the other one, I'm using all 94 minerals. And so I'm going to do testing and I'll share the results with you, but it's just fascinating to me that we're not emphasizing the foundation, which our food grows on and how that can affect our bodies. I mean, just take, for example, um, a tomato from Italy. If you've never tasted a tomato from Italy, um, you need to do it. It's incredible. And so like, why do these tomatoes from Italy taste so darn good? Is it the seed? 
No, it's in the soil. What is so unique in the soil? Well, they have a lot of soils that have been around volcanoes, as in volcano ash or minerals that provide the necessary elements for these plants to thrive on. And so, of course, in my greenhouse, I use volcanic minerals as one of the fertilizers, which I will be starting a whole new YouTube channel on that very soon. So the minerals in the soil supply the plants what they need. The nutrients in our body provide us with stable genes that then we can grow healthy bodies on. So again, I want to emphasize the importance of making sure that someone who's pregnant gets the right nutrition, not some synthetic prenatal, but the actual diet, eating food, very nutrient dense, as well as fortifying um, the woman who's breastfeeding as well. That's very, very important. And hopefully she will breastfeed because the formulas out there are just so deficient in nutrients. I mean, they actually talk about um, you know, like folic acid being so important um, in preventing birth defects, but what about all the other micronutrients and also in the right form? Something missing in the diet can leave the child with permanent uh, problems in their future health. And that leads me to the next question. What is the diet of a child nowadays? Well, unfortunately, it's ultra processed food. It's not just junk food. It's really bad junk food. In fact, 67% of their calories are ultra processed junk food. Now, does this have an effect on the child? Well, what do you think? In a major way. All right, next question. And please type this in the comments below because I want to read this. At what age did you start eating healthy? For me, it was 28 years old. Yeah, 28 years old. I'm actually 35 now, so that's it's been some years. And I'm being very sarcastic because I'm in my 50s now. But the point is that hopefully it's sooner than later. For some of you watching, you haven't started eating healthy yet. So I just want to encourage you to do that and also encourage any uh, female who is pregnant to start eating healthy immediately and also get the right micronutrients. And I'm not biased of my micronutrients, but I will do a plug for my trace minerals because trace minerals are involved in so many different biochemical pathways. And it's such a, an easy thing to provide trace minerals in a, in a blended form versus to try to take individual trace minerals one by one not being sure if you're getting the right balance. And I think out of all the vitamins and minerals, trace minerals are kind of like the most uh, ignored because I think people don't understand what they do. And they don't understand that our food nowadays is uh, deficient in micronutrients unless they're consuming nutrient dense foods. And then you have a woman who's pregnant, they go to the doctor and the doctor monitors the growth of this developing baby, right? But they're not looking at the diet. They're not measuring any deficiencies. They're unfortunately just not trained in nutrition. So this video is very, very, very important in increasing your awareness on healthy eating. And I think the next video for you to watch is what to eat that's nutrient dense. So I put it up right here. Check it out.